How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be showcasing the 10 new recipes that have been added to Don't Starve through the Hamlet DLC. So I've got all 10 recipes laid out here in crock pots and I'm going to be going over and cooking them again to show you some possible ingredient combinations as well as give you an idea of what the stats of each of these recipes are and what they can be used for. So number one, asparagus soup. This is probably going to be the most popular of the various foods because it is just so easy to make. So if we take a look here in our refrigerator, you can see I've got some asparagus. So you can do something as simple as add three asparagus and one twig here to the crock pot and it will result in asparagus soup. As far as its stats go, it restores 20 health, 18.75 hunger, and five sanity when eaten. So aside from the health provided, it's really not that great of a dish. Recipe number two we're gonna be taking a look at here is called feijoada, I think. It's apparently a Portuguese word, I looked it up. To go ahead and make one ourselves, it's going to require three of these bean bugs that you'll usually find by flipping over rocks, and then one meat. It can be a morsel, it could be a monster meat, it could be a large meat, aka regular meat, but it needs one meat in it. So this is something that you can do with those bean bugs that you usually find underneath the rocks that will normally decrease your sanity for eating them. So you need to find a recipe to put them in. Go ahead and put them in the feijoada. It restores 20 health, 75 hunger, and 15 sanity upon eating it. So it's a pretty, pretty decent source of hunger there, especially in the earlier parts of the game. You'll most likely have a lot of these bean bugs gathered by the time you finish exploring simply because when you flip over rocks there's a chance that you'll find uh, bean bugs under them. Okay, recipe number three that we're going to be taking a look at here actually looks quite delicious. It's called the gummy cake. Uh, it's pretty simple to make. It requires one gummy slug, which we can find once again underneath those rocks that you can flip over. So add one of those, add one honey, and then we are going to add two twigs. So this is a pretty straightforward recipe. And once it has been made, you'll see it has some pretty good stats to it. So, well, I shouldn't say pretty good. It's got some mediocre stats and some good stats. It hits you for three health, but it provides 150 hunger, much like the meaty stew that currently exists in the game. So it's kind of like a worse version of a meaty stew. And once again, this is a more of an early game recipe that I could see players making because you're going to be finding those gummy slugs underneath those rocks while exploring early on. And all it requires is the slug plus one sweetener, easy enough to get the honey from the mants, and a couple of twigs. And here you go. You have a food recipe that even though it does deduct a little bit of sanity, a little bit of health from you, 150 hunger is hard to say no to for something that simple. The fourth recipe we're going to be taking a look at here is called hard shell tacos. Now these can be made most easily by adding uh, two weevil carapaces to your crock pot. These you can obtain by killing the weevils that generally spawn during the evenings and nights from the tall grass areas. One twig and then one radish or other vegetable. I use radishes because radishes are the most common ones here. So the hard shell tacos will restore 20 health, 37.5 hunger, and five sanity. Once again, fairly low end stats, I guess you could say. The health, of course, is quite welcome. And the fact that this recipe can largely be stockpiled off to the side with ingredients that never go bad could definitely be compelling reasons to keep it on your list of recipes to potentially make there. The fifth recipe we're going to be looking at here is called iced tea. Uh, to make iced tea, you're going to need the picos, obviously. So let's add two p orange picos to the crock pot. Now you can obtain picos from the tea tree area. If you find tea trees, if you drop something to bait them out, almost anything, the picos are going to come out of those trees and try to steal it from you. And then you can put a regular trap down and catch the orange picos. But it does have to be an orange pico. It can't be the gray or black ones. I forget if they're called gray or black. Well, you need the orange ones. And then you also need one sweetener and one ice. The ice, I think, is optional, but... Oh, no, it's not optional. One sweetener, one ice. The ice is required because it, we're trying to make iced tea here. So, of course, you're going to need some ice in it. Now, I, iced tea is a little bit interesting. It's not as good as the coffee, but it speeds you for 33% of what drinking coffee would add to your speed boost. Yes, it, I'm, I'm terrible at explaining this, it would seem. But it is another drink that you can make that will increase your player's speed for, I think, about one and a half days. So it's not massively important. I would just consider to go out and get a stocking stick as opposed to messing around with these Picos and trying to make this stuff. Uh, honestly, it's just not worth it, in my opinion. But that is iced tea. And in addition to increasing your speed, it also gives you uh, three health, 
12.5 hunger and 33 sanity. So even if you're not making it for the speed, you could potentially be making it for the sanity. But in my opinion, it's just not that convenient to be stockpiling picos. Like it's just something you cannot stockpile because they need to be alive. It's a really weird requirement. And I just don't ever really see myself making that recipe. Recipe number six we're going to be taking a look at here is probably my favorite. It's called nettle rolls. Uh, I've personally made this one the most so far during my time spent in game. What we're going to need to make it is stuff that can all be stockpiled off to the side. It's never going to spoil. So that's really nice. The nettles themselves can be grown on sort of a nettle farm if you decide to irrigate it. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until a very rainy season when you can potentially find them in like the deep rain, rainforest and stuff. But to make the nettle rolls themselves, you're gonna add three regular nettle leaves to the crock pot as well as one filler. In this case, it's going to be a twig. Now you could use other fillers such as ice. Ice is like the only other realistic filler because if you add berries, I know it can turn into the fistful of jam. And if you add a vegetable to it, it can turn into ratatouille. So. You probably want to stay away from fruits and vegetables as the filler for the nettle rolls. But these nettle rolls, the reason that they're so good is because they stop you from sneezing for 720 seconds during the lush season. And that's a really big boon because you don't have to deal with being insane and constantly dropping your items and needing to pick them back up when you're sneezing. And in addition to the amount of... Uh, what they call it, antihistamines that it provides, the temporary cure for hay fever. In addition to that attribute, it also restores 20 health, 25 hunger, and 5 sanity, all of which are pretty decent stats considering. Now, you will have to go through a little bit of work to actually grow them, but it, it, it's a highly recommended recipe for Hamlet uh, from me. It's the one that I, that I have been making the most so far with my time in game. The seventh recipe we're going to be taking a look at here is the snake bone soup. Now, this uses the bones that you get from the Pugalisk, and it has a rather unique feature that it has a higher priority than apparently monster lasagna does. So you can put in two monster meat, two of these snake bones, and you'll get snake bone soup out of it. And eating snake bone soup restores 40 health, 25 hunger, and 10 sanity. So given its relatively low costs to make and the fact you can stockpile one of the ingredients off to the side into perpetuity because it never spoils, this is something that you're probably going to be wanting to use the snake bones for after defeating the Pugalisk. The eighth recipe we're going to be demonstrating here is called the Spicy Vegetable Stinger. It comes in a little jar like this with a straw on it. To make a spicy vegetable stinger, we're going to need something like three radishes or three asparagus. These are the easiest vegetables that come across. Now the spicy vegetable stinger restores three health, 25 hunger, and 33 sanity. So it might be useful for players in the earlier parts of the game who want a little bit of additional sanity. It's really cheap to come by, especially if you use something like three radishes because radishes and asparagus are found growing around either in pig farms or even in the wild. So that one should be relatively easy to create and it could come in handy for a little bit of extra sanity. The ninth recipe we're going to be taking a look at here is called the steamed ham sandwich. I imagine that's a bit of a reference to the steamed hams meme. And to make it, it's going to be, this is one of the more complicated ones in my opinion, You're going to need one foliage, one meat. Now you actually are going to need meat here. It could be a cooked meat, it could be regular raw meat, but you can't use monster meat and you couldn't use like a little morsel. Uh, it actually requires meat, pig, pig meat, because you're making a ham sandwich. It also requires a vegetable, and then it requires a filler, and I usually use berries for fillers because it's usually pretty easy to grow berries. So this is the combination of the recipe that I usually use to make the steamed ham sandwich. It's overall pretty decent, but I would say it's not something you're going to be making a lot because to my knowledge, the foliage cannot ever sort of be grown or cultivated in any way. So once you run out of foliage from those caves, you're just going to be out of luck for making additional steamed ham sandwiches. So this is probably my least favorite recipe of all. It's just due to how inaccessible it generally is and how short-lived, like you're not going to see a lot of payoff for memorizing this recipe. But if you do make it, it restores 40 health, 37.5 hunger, and 15 sanity. Recipe number 10 here, we have, guess what this was? This was tea. So now tea is probably the most interesting recipe here. It rotted while it was sitting in the crock pot. Now you might've noticed I have iced tea over here. Iced tea is different from regular tea. To make regular tea, what we're going to do, ooh, these picos are almost dead. Let's quickly try to cook these picos here. We're going to need two orange picos once again, one 
sweetener, and then one filler. And I usually use a berry for filler. Now, you might have noticed that's very similar to what we had for the iced tea. The difference being, instead of putting in ice as a filler, we put in berries as a filler. And as you can see, they gave us a nice little tea set here. The reason tea is so unique is because unlike a lot of other recipes, the tea itself will cool down very quickly. It's like iced tea, but it spoils after a day, and after a day it will turn into iced tea. However, if you leave it sitting in the crock pot when that conversion is supposed to take place, what will happen instead is that it will just rot, which means that if you want to make tea to use, you're going to need to use it almost immediately. This makes it a little bit less convenient than the iced tea. The iced tea, you can leave it there in the refrigerator and whatever thing for prolonged periods of time. But you could do the same thing with regular tea. And the ironic thing is that despite the fact you're putting a hot dish inside the ice box, it's going to cool off slower and turn into iced tea slower because of that. But it will not turn into rot if you have it in the ice box, unlike if you have it in the crock pot. The stats for it are largely the same as the iced tea. It gives you three health, 12.5 hunger, and 33 sanity. In addition to this, it increases your walking speed by half as much as coffee would increase it for two minutes. So if you're interested in the speed boost, you'll want to use the regular tea. It's just called tea. And if you want to use the, uh, like the sanity restoration aspect of it, you'll have no problem making iced tea instead because it lasts longer and you don't have to babysit it quite as much. So that's a brief demonstration of the 10 new recipes to be found here in the Hamlet DLC for Don't Starve single player. Thank you very much for watching as always and I hope to see you next time.